Hey hello there fine people of the internet, my name is Trofinet the Babbling Belgian and I'd like to share with you my two cents. Destiny 2 launched last week and so far I'm really really enjoying it, but a lot of people seem to have some grievances with the game. Mainly the fact that shaders, items used to recolor your gear, are now consumable rather than infinite use as they were before. Some people blame Bungie and Activision that they changed part of the game to force people to pay for microtransactions to get certain items like shaders, molds, ships and sparrows. Well, I say that's blowing it a little bit out of proportion. In the original Destiny you only had one general shader slot, coloring your entire armor set excluding your weapons to a certain dual color scheme. If you wanted to color your guardian in pink and yellow, then you were out of luck because the devs never made that glorious combination. By the end of Destiny 1, there was some experimentation with single gear color alterations, mainly in lights embedded in the armor, but even at that time those items were consumable. Destiny 2, however, changes that entirely for the better. Now, every single piece of gear or other item on your character screen is completely customizable. That means that as a hunter, for example, you could have a red cloak, yellow helmet, blue gauntlets, pink chest armor and flashy green boots if you wanted to. What's more is that you can now also change the color scheme of your weapons, ghost, ship and even your sparrow. You can even change which particle effect is fired when you drop on the planet from your ship. The changes are amazing, allowing for a level of customization that we haven't seen before in Destiny. Bringing us back to the twofold point of discussion. Shaders are now consumable and you can quote unquote buy them. Let's start with the consumable problem. Shaders in the original Destiny had unlimited uses. They had a specific slot on your character screen similar to weapons and armor and were therefore considered to be items for all intents and purposes. You could gather a collection and swap color scheme at will, but in reality when you found the color scheme you liked, you would probably rarely change it. Limiting your shader options by making them consumable instead of unlimited use does in theory sound like a really bad thing. However, in practice, coupled with the fact that you can now place different shaders on each separate item, it allows for a lot of experimentation that you wouldn't be inclined to do otherwise. You don't need to guess how it will look either, because each shader can be previewed on your selected item before you commit to it. It also causes a sort of visual diversity in everybody's guardian that wasn't there in, previous, in the previous game. Since everybody will have a different set of shader options available to them at any given time, everyone will now look different from one another. You can more easily identify yourself now because not everyone will wear the same gear with the same fancy shader that they got from the most recent raid. Then the biggest problem for most people, the fact that you can buy shaders. I say quote unquote buy because allow me to explain. I feel like this argument is made by people who haven't played the game all that much yet. Let me explain a few things about how loot works in this game before I make my argument. Higher quality items in Destiny 2, meaning legendaries and exotics, so purple and yellow items, drop as something called engrams. These are basically loot boxes where you don't know what item is waiting inside until you open it up at the Crypt Ark or Tess Everest, which is the character you can buy items from as well. There are two types of engrams in Destiny 2. Regular engrams, which drop a single weapon or armor piece of the same rarity of the engram or higher. In this category you also have luminous and powerful engrams, but they all just drop multiple weapons or armor pieces at once from the same quality as the engram or even higher. But then you also have something called Bright Engrams that drop pretty much everything, but mostly we're talking about shaders, weapon molds, ships and sparrows, Destiny's uh, version of a space scooter. There's some variants on Bright Engrams that skew drops more in one direction or the other, but that's basically it. Bright Engrams can be bought with real money. It's as simple as that. If that was the only way, however, to get Bright Engrams, then yes, I would understand the heated controversy going on right now, but it's not. Bright Engrams are ridiculously easy to get by. Once you hit level 20, the current level cap, you keep getting experience. That experience fills up a similar level bar, but every time you level up past level 20, you get a free Bright Engram instead. Filled to the brim with weapon mods, maybe a ship or sparrow, and most importantly for this discussion, a bunch of shaders. You also get bright engrams from some of the quests you can complete. Point is, you earn bright engrams by doing just about anything in the game. Shot a fallen in the face? Experience. Open the chest? Experience. Completed the quest? Level up? Bright engram for you. You get the point. The microtransactions are there, yes, but do they have a bad effect on the game? 
I don't really think so. If you want to buy bright engrams, go ahead, the option is there. But you can't blame a company to capitalize on the fact that some people are apparently too lazy to play the game they bought. You don't need to buy bright engrams at all. If nobody buys these things, they will eventually disappear. Microtransactions don't hurt anyone if they don't hurt your gaming experience, and that's not the case in this scenario. There have been plenty of bad implementations in other games, but this is not the case here. Back to the shaders, to further prove my point about the microtransaction argument being an even more ignorant statement than it already is, whenever you get shaders, you get between 3 and 5 uses for it, enough to color most, if not all, of your armor. Even though they always drop from bright engrams, they also drop constantly from patrol chests, public events, high value targets and pretty much every other activity in any of Destiny 2's 4 open world areas. I've made the argument of personalization and experimentation with shaders before so I'm not gonna do it again. But right here you have my collection of shader items after around 10 hours of play and a lot of color experimentation by my hand. I'll say it again, don't worry you'll get plenty of shaders while you play the game. Just enjoy this game for what it is. A great sequel that improved pretty much every facet of its predecessor. But hey, that's just my two cents on the matter. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments whether you feel the same or if you feel like my arguments don't hold up. I'm open for any kind of discussion here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you dropped it a like right here on YouTube. And uh, well, thank you guys enormously for watching. See you next time and goodbye.